Thinking outside the box is excellent advice in most situations, and it can even get you out of prison. It seemingly got Glenn Stark Chambers out of prison in 1990, and he's still on the run. In fact, his whereabouts remain unknown. If you live in the southern United States, you may even have run into him. Chambers was an inmate at Polk Correctional Institute in Florida, where he was serving a life sentence for murdering his girlfriend with his bare hands. He was sentenced in 1975 at the age of 23. The young man attempted to escape almost immediately upon arrival in prison, attacking a guard with two accomplices and managing to climb out a window. It ended about as you'd expect for three prisoners climbing out of a prison window. They didn't get very far, and a Florida judge added five years to Chambers' life term, a symbolic rebuke and a serious impediment to any future case in the appellate court. According to the Cinemaholic, by 1990, Chambers seemed to be turning over a new leaf. His behavior over the 15-year interlude had reportedly been exemplary, and prison authorities gave him permission to work in a furniture construction shop designed to give inmates vocational training and a sense of purpose. But Chambers had a secret plan. On February 21, 1990, he slipped into one of the boxes of furniture that was due to be shipped off the premises to a warehouse. Somehow, Chambers enlisted the assistance of a fellow inmate to seal him inside the crate. No one noticed the extra weight as they loaded the crate into the truck nor did anyone notice on the drive to Daytona Beach anything shifting around in the back of the truck. No footsteps, clunking lids, or a sound of the back panel sliding open or dropping shut alerted anyone. Somewhere along the route, he escaped from the truck. All that was left was his discarded prison uniform, and that is the last time the inmate was seen. Upon arrival, however, one open crate contained a discarded prisoner's uniform, and the Polk Correctional Institute was missing a man. How Chambers managed to emerge from the crate unnoticed and then acquire ordinary civilian clothing is unknown. So far, there are no answers, and no one has yet to hear from him again. Before his time in prison, a 23-year-old Glenn Chambers was living with his 21-year-old girlfriend, single mother Connie Weeks, in Sarasota, Florida. The relationship seems to have been abusive from the start. In January 1975, a policeman intervened to prevent Chambers from physically attacking Weeks on the street during one of their arguments. Chambers reportedly already had his girlfriend's hair in his fist. The policeman, who was off-duty at the time, arrested Chambers on the spot and called for backup to bring him to jail. But Weeks was stubbornly loyal to the man who had hurt her and bailed her boyfriend out that same day. He was already a big man and she was a little woman. Tragically, that very same night, Chambers showed up at the Sarasota Memorial Hospital, carrying Weeks' battered body in his arms. According to Chambers, she slipped in the shower. It was obviously a lie, and the doctors and nurses who tended to Weeks phoned the police. She died in the hospital in less than a week, and a judge sentenced Chambers to the electric chair for murder. The Florida Supreme Court commuted Chambers' death sentence to a life term a few months later. After that first escape attempt, it took 15 years of penance for prison authorities to trust him enough to give him the furniture shop position, and he betrayed that trust almost immediately. We'll never know what twisted, unhealthy thoughts must motivate a man like Glenn Chambers, but we'd be foolish not to acknowledge that he's clever. No one knows where Chambers is today, although according to WTSP News, someone claimed to have spotted him near the beach in Alabama. So if you ever find yourself in Alabama sunning yourself on the Gulf Coast, keep one eye open for any suspicious-looking men in their late 60s. Chambers is reputedly intelligent with a keen interest in anthropology. Given his years in the prison furniture shop, he ought to be good with his hands as well. He also has a tattoo on his upper left arm that says, Live Free or Die, although this might have been surgically removed or covered over in the intervening years. He is also said to have distinctive bright blue eyes. If you or anyone you know is dealing with domestic abuse, you can call the National Domestic Violence Hotline at 1-800-799-7233. You can also find more information, resources, and support at their website.